was the initial brief for Starship? Well, when Neil first approached me with Starship, he told me that that that's an angry movie. And I was and I was actually like probably that word right there just almost said it all. Angry. It's an angry movie, and I I want. He told me I want a, a really dark score. It's like the darker you can get with it, the the happier I will be. And so, well, I, I had to put my, my head around it because even though this is totally the kind of music, you know, the kind of projects that, you know, got me to become a film composer to start with, that was probably... Uh, Starship is the first time where I can really put my hands in that, on, on a project where, yeah, that's it, go full scale with it. It's pretty much how it is. Like, you make it dark and you just, like, go with it. And so, so yeah, it, it it took it took some research. It took it took also some a lot of thinking. So, how did you find the the darkness for the main theme? It's strange to explain, but the first instrument that that came in my mind was piano. And it's weird because you'd think that wouldn't be the first thing, but yeah, for some reason, I first envisioned something very simple with piano, and then that's where that big first hit of brass came in my mind and then uh, uh, a sort of clock rhythm where all the string section does that and it just grows bigger and bigger and bigger and and then you know and then it grows into the moment where the, the, the next big picture I had in mind still was the sequence that Neil showed me where uh, John Worthy is being punished uh, right away as he just got uh, engaged into the, <laughs> the I guess the, the Federation uh, he is being attached to the hall uh, for the first taking off of the ship as a punishment and we'll see if he survives and that that was also a very strong picture because first of all it's so unusual it's so original I was like wow that, that's such a beginning and I had that picture. He he had shown me those 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 shots. So I remembered how we see the guy attached to the hole, and it just like goes in the air. And I was like, that's it. That's gonna be the theme where the melody just like keeps going up and up and up and up and up, and to the point where it actually reaches the full range of the French horn that start really low. And as they reach space, it finally ends on the very last note that a French horn can play. <laughs> so. So that's pretty much yeah what I had in mind. Funnily enough, when finally Neil gave me the the cut, there was very little to to change except it was longer than what I envisioned when I first made the film. So all I had to do is to reorganize it. But there are sections of it that were almost like I actually had scored it to the pictures. It was already there. There was just a few details to tweak here and there, but overall. It's almost like the timings were perfect, and that's you know I always get a kick out of that. <laughs> that's the proof that it's gonna be it's gonna be smooth for the whole film right there. <laughs> How did the composing play out for you? Did Neil guide you at all? In this case, what I really appreciate about our relationships, like right away he told me that you know he was trusting my judgment on it, and uh, usually the way it goes in a case like this, we we started pretty much in a standard way where. He loved the theme, like he got back to when I first sent him the theme, he was like, oh my god, yep, that dead on, that's that's gonna work, it made me really happy. <laughs> so Neil loved the theme, and from there, like, since he had basically like at this point signed up on, on the on the theme, like for me, like as a film composer usually, if the director is really on to the to the main theme, then it's really just a matter of developing that and making sure we never like we always stay in that in that as long as we stay in that, this should be fine. What happens is usually we score the first ten minutes and see if we're still on the same page. Like you know, you heard the theme, you like it, but this is how it develops. You still like it as much, and yes, it was the case. And so from there, uh, it was it was a very very smooth process because it seemed that. You know, I feel fortunate enough in this project that I think I, I captured uh, Neil's vision of what he was expecting the score to do for that for that film. What was the biggest problem area for you? Was there anything that was difficult for you at all? It's packed with action, and there is a lot going on. There is a lot of subplots, plots going on in Starship, and but as particularly as we start to reach the second half of the film, um, it, the challenge sometimes for me was how to make the music 
follow the action even though we are in one scene there's a huge battle but then we come back and there is another group of people that are doing their own thing as part of the main plot and how how to make the music to switch with that without somehow spoiling what what's going on and you know that so sometimes i actually had to redraft a few things like i or or i just like remove that what's funny is that something that also neil and i were on the same page is that sometimes less is better and so i always kept that in mind and sometimes sometimes it would just be about removing instruments because there's so many battles in starship was it hard to find different composing strategies for each scene battle music is is actually very intense it's very intense to make. You are exposed for like 13 hours a day to <laughs> and big percussions and big things in your face. And so I actually found myself exhausted at some point. And I had just came up with like a, at least like three big battle music that, that turned out, you know, like really how I envisioned it. I was very happy with them. And there is that. Uh, after that, the, the, there is we start to get to see even more of the battles going on on Terra Nostra, and I remember it's like for two, three days I had just I was just like, I oh know I don't know what to do. I've already done that, you know, and so this time I did it. I actually decided to leave it alone and go score the end of the film because. Uh, Neil had just finally given me the, the last piece of the film because a lot of it was happening as you know this is this is how it works <laughs> it's like basically we were progressing as I was scoring Neil was a little ahead of me in terms of editing and so was sending me you know some part of the film I had most of the film I was still missing the very end and uh, he had sent me the very end and that allowed me for a break because as I was discovering the rest of the film Funnily enough, I was exhausted for like big battle music, but here was the end of the film, which turned out, you know, personally, I, I think it's it's my best my best track of the whole. <laughs> this one I I prefer. So, what was the inspiration for the Overseer? I had the inspiration right away. It's like I saw it, I knew exactly what to do, and I was like, you know. I guess I'm just gonna take a break since we're on a deadline <laughs> I still need to come up with music so let's do that I scored the end and funnily enough scoring the end gave me that relief that I needed and then I went back and I like basically <laughs> I gave everything I had in those last cues uh, of battles the whole process was pretty awesome at this point because I was able to finish it and like basically link the end with uh, what was going on and that just you know, I think it worked for me and I was, I was very happy with it. <laughs> so did Neil let you do your own thing or were you able to breathe throughout the film? The thing that I really enjoyed uh, working with Neil as a filmmaker is that um, indeed he did leave me, he did leave spots, a lot of spots for the music to breathe, which is really rare nowadays in action movies. And I've actually had the opportunity to meet with uh, composers such as uh, John Ottman who complains about that that nowadays they just don't let the music breathe anymore and you know it's a style maybe people like it or not but it sounds like most of the time you know it, it could be help and a starship is very works very well and it's very smooth in that way that even though it's a grand like angry sci-fi movie with lots of battles very dark plots and you know a very fast cut action packed movie it still has the time he's got those grand uh, shots that's particularly some of those the, the shots for the kissing scene for example is like like right there like oh I could let my imagination just go with it he has that beautiful dawn uh, shot there like I don't know how he came up with it it's so beautiful and so like that was very inspiring and then those planets shots also where you know it's like that's all I've always wanted to score it's like like a giant you know on the, you're on the big screen and you just see that big panoramic of a planet with space and then the ships flying by. You know, and, and it's short. Truth is, like, some of them are not as long, but they're just enough so that the music can, like, just, like, take, take the, the, the spots that it needs and then just go back and complement, keep complementing the pictures. And so, yeah, that, that's something that I really enjoyed uh, working with Neil in that regard, is that he definitely... 
it, it's nice to see you know uh, Neil as a filmmaker has such a great understanding of you know the relationship between the pictures and music and right there you know I, I always had a little smile because I'm like I know here that's my spot here <laughs> I know it was left for me <laughs> now tell me what was the inspiration for the overseer the overseer theme uh, before that that's another thing that I had in mind from conversations we had even before we started laying down any notes uh, on Starship is that Neil had already told me that he had shot uh, the sequel for Starship the overseer basically the second film really the overseer that that's that's gonna be his moment and so Neil pointed out to me that you know really whatever theme the overseer has is really gonna be you know thematically the theme of the second film that's a giant clue as far as what am I gonna have to uh, come up with for that particular character because whatever I come up with is gonna be like a giant influence on whatever's coming up on the next feature how did you approach it the way I approached it is as a theme of a full story not just a theme of a character not just you know uh, a light motive for it for him but really a grand theme that covers not only him but part of the story. Funnily enough, the way it worked, uh, I I actually were was able to come up with the theme just like just like a spectator watching the film. As you get to discover him, I had the first bits of inspiration for the notes that goes with him. But it's really how we get to progress that the pictures told me really how is that theme really gonna be complete and uh, uh, of course the big moment was Neil had told me right away is like when when he takes off from Terminus to go on his journey is like, like right here and we we want to hear his theme and so you know I, I had enough scenes of him to have like the basic of it so that I can make it like basically go full scale for that very moment and uh, as we also worked on the introduction uh, Basically, the, the very final notes, the very final uh, texture of the film took place when, when finally uh, I was exposed to, to the history we get to see of, uh, of the Overseer, which you know, I thought was really cool. I mean, it's like right there. The theme I had come up with and seeing that, seeing more of the background of the story, like the whole thing made sense and all of a sudden really like my goal here was just like this needs to be so dark I really don't know what I'm gonna use. <laughs> like Neil actually gave me a phone call as I was working on it, you know, wondering how I was doing, you know, and and I'm telling him, Well, you know, that's funny, you're just calling me. I was just asking my wife, what instrument could I use that is really dark and dirty? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's so funny and so Neil calls and I, I, I just tell him that oh yeah I was just wondering about that <laughs> and so we had a little conversation about that and uh, and then you know uh, I went back to it and, and funnily enough that that turned out to be like a one night I worked all night on it I for a long time I hadn't gone to bed at 5 in the morning but that's the other thing is I think like I needed to be in the silence of, of, of the night like I needed to be in that that you know you feel alone you feel everything's different at night and I hadn't done that in a while and that I think helped a lot to just like work at night no disturbance nothing and just being like basically freaking myself out <laughs> in front of that one sequence of the overseer and coming up with something as dark as I could it was a challenge too because it was like how dark can I go like am I going to fail myself here like is it gonna be as dark as I want it to be so I unfortunately time will tell us I mean Neil really liked it uh, he told me right away the next day when I seen it like wow you know that's really dark and you know I've re-listened to it many times like usually I I like to re-listen to the music I've made at least like a week later because all of a sudden I get more like a refresh here and uh, sure enough that's to this day at least that's that's the darkest film I came up with. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything that you're looking forward to? Well I look forward for uh, Starship 2. I mean I'm so ready. <laughs> it's like scoring Starship 1 and knowing the direction that Starship 2 is taking. I'm basically already uh, 
I'm already preparing for war pretty much, it's pretty much what it is, it's like I, I'm gearing up to, to just like come up with, like I'm already thinking okay how I develop all that and how, how I'm gonna make it even more awesome in the second one, I'm looking forward to that. I grew up in the twilight of the Great Empire. We oppose this ridiculous war against the Terra Nostra. The Federation flourished, and the people were censored. You people are nothing but war mockers. And a new order would soon arise. Old Earth is to be vaporized. There's no more time for discussion. At 2300 hours, we strike. The Federation are bombing their own planets. And they're blaming us. Blast shield! Freeze! Thrusters online. Fire! Shields are gone, Captain! Open fire! 